Hello, Dragon Ball Infinity. I am your DBI Admin Eigenbahn, and uh, tonight we're just, I'm just gonna do a fun video. We were kind of talking about this on Discord. Um, this is the Dragon Ball Infinity tier list for the roleplay universe for the roleplay characters. Um, I want to set some kind of ground rules before I get started with this. First of all, this is of course just my opinion. Uh, this isn't serious. I'm not implying that if you end up lower on this tier list than some other character, you can never beat them in a fight, anything like that. But, like, and, and the way that I want to structure my tier list, uh, I made this available publicly so you guys can look it up and make your own if you want. But the way that I'm going to kind of do mine is based off of... I'm going to assume that all of these characters are the same tier, let's just say tier 2, you know, kind of the baseline tier. They're fighting to kill you, uh, and let's just say that everyone has equal levels of motivation to win the fight. Um, and I'm just going to base it on who I think would be the most dangerous. Um, who would be the toughest to take down, whose techniques are, you know, strong, you know stronger, um... There's, I, I tried to pick literally every single character that I know of from our roleplay setting. There's probably one or two that I missed, but I'm pretty sure I got most everyone. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, some of these characters haven't shown up in a while. Some of them never reached tier two. A lot of characters have not even reached tier two. So, like, I'll be basing this a lot off of, like, what I saw from them, what I know about them, um... And just kind of, uh, and make, you know, making my best judgment, my best guess, based off of what I've seen or what has been applied in the past. Uh, and, and of course, you know, this is, this is all just for fun. This isn't serious. Uh, so I hope no, I, I don't, I hope no one gets upset with me if, depending on where you land here. Now to start things off, I'm just going to go ahead and, and give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So I have two NPCs on this list. The first is the Sage. I think any day of the week, uh, the Sage is going to be one of the, the hardest fights that you ever have. Um, probably doesn't even matter what tier you are. It's probably, he's definitely near the top. Uh, and then the bottom of the list is... Uh, North Kai Rendo, if I can find him, yeah, okay. So I don't, I don't think there would ever be a situation where Rendo would be tough to take down if you were the same tier as him. I, I, just, you know, if you've ever seen his role plays with Thousand, I mean, he's just, he's a pretty chill dude. So like, that's the top of the list. Like S tier is like you are fighting like one of the the hardest people in the universe to take down, um. D tier is, uh, you know, beating up a lazy Kai, uh, <laughs> who, <laughs> I specifically didn't put Cream Puff on here because we don't have a tier high enough for Cream Puff. Uh, <laughs> okay, all right, so we're just going to go from the top here. I, I wanted this to be in alphabetical order, but I, I just made them as I was going. Um, so we're going to start with Ariel. Ariel is a Kaio in the... Uh, in the Shattered Atmosphere logs, uh, she hangs out, she's friends with Cordio. She is largely a non-pacifist, or at least has been in the past. I've seen her do one energy ball. She doesn't really have a lot of training. Um, no real feats on the channel that I've seen so far. Maybe she's got one in the upcoming uh, Shattered Atmosphere with the with, where, where the rebels are getting, getting attacked. Rebel base is being attacked, but I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna put Ariel in D. I think that's based off of what I've seen so far. I, I think she'd be one of the easier people to to attack on any given day. Um, bangers. Uh, the one of the uh, one of the detectives from uh, DBI Noir. Uh, bangers. Bangers is like a police officer. He's got some skills, but I mean, as far as I know, he's never mentioned. Uh, his backstory has never suggested that he's been formally trained in any way, except for like basic police force. Um, 
I, I've never seen an RP skill from Banger, so I don't even have a clue what that would look like if he was T2 and what he would be throwing around. Um, but uh, I I think because this is a less serious character, it's more about the atmosphere, just, you know, I, I'm going to put Banger's in C. I, I, don't, I don't think he could really put up a fight against some of these others. And I really should have added, like, a whole tier for, like, just complete mystery so like for instance the next one that's coming up Charon uh not a clue no idea I've so far Charon I think is just like a spirit that is inside of sticks right now so once he gets stronger like I don't even know what to expect but what I do know is that he's or what I think I know I, I could be completely wrong but he might be connected to Thorned Doomiston in some way, like maybe a piece of the Thorn Demon that survived um, somehow. So, based off of that alone, I'm gonna put him. I'm just gonna put him in C because I don't have anything else to base it off of. Um, if I if I had a little bit more information, then he might be connected to Thorn Doomiston. I might put him higher, but that's that's all I've got. Alright, next is Sen. Uh, Sen is the Kunatsu, I guess, Shadowrunner. Really like the, uh, the Cyber's protege, in a way. I mean, he's his own character, don't get me wrong. But, you know, he's the character that Cyber left his fortune to, to put it into perspective. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to controversially say that if Sen was more powerful, if he was like T2 and needed to kill you... Um, I think he'd be really tough to take down, uh, and I've seen, and especially if he, like, I know one of his abilities that is, like, technomancy, and there's some crazy things he could do with that if he was going all out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put Sen in, like, a definitive A tier. I think he would be really hard to beat. Alright, then we got Cordio. Um, Cordio? Namekian? Uh, warrior? Uh, part of the Shattered Atmosphere? Uh, friends with Hypo. He's trained under Basso, uh, so he's been trained by a master. He's, uh, is, you know, pretty good with energy. He's got, like, eye beams and very, like, just very kind of effective overall. Overall, um, I don't think that he's got a really deep background in training, but it has been implied that he was trained, just that, like, he was more interested in becoming, like, an archaeologist and stuff. I think this is a pretty solid candidate for, like, a B tier. Like, you're... You're not going to be, you know, it's not going to be like the fight of your life taking on Cordio, but it's not going to be easy either. Like, it's it's a just a, you know, it could go either way kind of deal. All right, Fusion. Um, I, I think it's, I think it's pretty easy to say Fusion's in like S tier. Uh, just based off of the sheer number of people that he defeated uh, prior to and during the Tiger, the Wolf, and the Bear. Um, I kind of want to put him down into A tier, though, for one reason, which is that we have never seen him actually training. Um, and he did get beat by Koshiro. Uh, I mean, Koshiro was a tier over him, but Kosho being a fairly, like, you know, Kosho knows, knew how to street box and stuff, but he certainly wasn't in martial, you know, martial arts master tiers. Um... So those two reasons I would like to put him down in A, but I like I think the implication is just too high here. It's just, like the implication that he is a very very powerful and deadly fighter. Uh, he's also like pro honestly he's one of the scariest characters to face as a you know a, a, on the channel because I mean realistically unless the the writer themselves is finding a way not to do it. Like, it's almost always going to be a death fight with Fusion. Like, most of these other characters, you might fight them, but it's not, you know, it's probably going to be like a spar or something. But if, like, you're fighting Fusion, your character is literally on the line. Um, so I, I think he solidly goes into S. Uh, Galvis. Um, I don't actually, like, I've, I've read a lot of Galvis's solos, but I've never seen him fighting with or against another character he's got he's recently submitted some new skills to give you an idea to give an idea of like what he would look like at higher tiers and he's got like some remote some like flying 
I want to call them like flying proximity bomb things. And he's got like this air cutter cannon that can do a few different modes. Um, I think androids in general tend to be stronger opponents. Uh, not just because they can't be sensed or something, but because they, they're they all like... They're always bringing in all these gadgets and things, which I think is harder for uh, a, a an organic character, you know, a, a non a non android character to kind of deal with. You know, it's sort of like the other character is just coming in with like a full armory of of, of <laughs> let's, let's just say bullshit uh, versus your key techniques and stuff. Um, also, I do think that evil characters, just in general are going to always be a tougher fight because again these are the characters that actually might kill you um you know so you're you're always in for a little bit more against them i'm gonna put galvis into a tier without without much to really back that up i if there was like a b plus tier that's where i would probably put galvis um genesis uh genesis Genesis would be in like the A plus tier. I don't think that Genesis is an S, but he's definitely an A. Uh, so I'm gonna put Genesis. I'm gonna put Genesis in A. Um, I mean, Genesis is a is a major character in the setting. He is you know a leader style character, very very strong. He has beaten and fought some of the the best in the verse so far. He's like fought in Dawn, fought Nova. Um, but he always comes up a little short on those fights. I mean, he's beaten Leaf, and he's, you know, had some spars, I think, with a few other characters. Um, so, I, I think that, I think that he is definitely always going to be a very hardcore fight, especially if there's really good motivation involved. But I do think that he's just, like, slightly underneath these others. Um, so yeah, again, probably like an A-plus tier, if, if we had that, but... So high. I guess I could I guess I could rank them. So let's see. He would be at the very top of A for sure. Um, Sin definitely is in front of Galvis. Uh, the Sage is in front of Fusion. Um, I'm gonna say that Charon is probably in front of Bangers. Um, this just makes sense. Uh, Rendo's <laughs> behind Ariel. <laughs> okay. All right, all right, yeah. So we'll we'll kind of keep them in order like this too. Um, all right, Grace from uh, D and DBI uh, is up for bat, and I'm going to be honest. I'm sorry, Grace. Uh, you're you're probably in D tier. I'm, I'm sorry. You, I think Grace is probably above Ariel because she's not. Uh, she's not a pacifist at all. She would smack. You know, she will beat you to death with a club. Um, but just the, the low setting, the, like the low magic setting of D and DBI and the fact that I don't even know if Grace's powers would work off of Conat's, you know, presumably they would, right? But like technically they, you know, it's very likely they wouldn't since they're, they come from Antana. Um, yeah, I, sorry, Grace. I think this is where you go, but you're a healer by trade. So it's kind of, this is kind of where you belong. Um... All right, Greg. Uh, a lot of people might not remember Greg. He was Zote's character who came to Pineapple Cove with Kosho. Uh, he was a hunter of the wilds uh, from the Sacred Lands, actually. Um, never got to really see what Greg would have done with uh, his unlocked potential. Um, so I don't have any idea what he would have done for his his techniques. But he really he wasn't super interested in fighting. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put Greg in, in probably C tier, like low C, very low C. I think that's about right. Okay, hi Bo. Uh, okay, so this might be a little controversial. This might be a little controversial, but I am going to put Hypo in a solid B, probably like B plus, not quite A. And hear me out on this. Um, I think that Hypo is a crazy heroic character. Um, I think that he's got a really powerful skill set, and I think that I think that on any given day of the week, it would be it would be a hard fight. But I don't think it's in. I don't think that he would try to trick you or 
have a you know have like an ace up his sleeve, which I think is what a lot of these A characters uh, bring to the table. I think those characters are more likely to like cheat or something in that regard in a way that I think would take Hypo like off guard. Um, you know, I, I, you know his his abilities are like super straightforward. I think theirs are a lot less straightforward, and just the overall techniques. And I think the the what they'd be willing to do to win the fight is is more than hypo. Um, but I would put him at the very top of B. Uh, and again, if there was like a B plus, he'd be there. Um, all right, end on. For all the reasons that I just mentioned, I think that's that Indon actually goes into a uh, high A tier, uh, either right behind Genesis, um, not into A plus like I was talking about with Genesis, but definitely into into high A. Uh, I'm still gonna put Indon beneath Sin. I, I do think that Sin would be a really scary character if he became powerful, um, but Indon's. Indon's transformation is literally overclock, where he just outthinks you. Uh, that is hard to fucking deal with. I don't like. I don't think there's many characters that like. You're never going to pull off, pull the wool over Indon's eyes, kind of deal. Like you're not going to take him off guard in that regard. So I think I think he's in high A. Um, Kalo. I don't know much about Kalo. I haven't seen them in a while. They might be in the the breakout. With Fusion Log, that might be going on, but I'm not sure. Um, so I don't have a lot of information. I don't know what kind of key techniques that they'd be interested in. But they are a bio-android, and kind of just by default, I think that, again, similar to just androids, I think bio-androids are very... If they get... If they actually get into the high tiers, they're very, very hard to deal with. So I am going to put Kalo in, like, the bottom of B tier. Just because there, I don't have enough information to make a better assessment than that. Um, Cornell. All right, so Cornell. Uh, so Cornell is kind of a gag character, sort of, like not really, but has some of those elements to it. Um, but it's also a really crazy magic demon um, with a lot of weird skills. And if Cornell was really trying to kill you. I think it would be tough, um, but since he is kind of this like monster of the week thing, I don't know. Um, I am gonna put Cornell in like the highest part of C. I, and I don't don't know if that's correct. It, I'm thinking B tier is probably better, but I think highest part of C so far. Um, all right, and then my character, Koshiro. Uh, I think Kosho has done a lot of training in the last year. He's pretty strong, but he he doesn't really have that background to fill it in. He's um, got a very, just very straightforward power set. There's really not a whole lot of tricks coming from him. I think Kosho's in a in a solid B, probably probably even behind Corio. Um, I think he's the kind of fighter that like you know you, you're gonna you're gonna struggle with, but you know he's he's definitely not any harder to beat than some of these others. Um, all right, Craft. Uh, this is the um, the mage from Zahiron, and we don't know a whole bunch about Craft. We do know he's kind of like a necromancer. Uh, and he does use magic, so that's uh, that definitely puts him, gives him some advantages. Uh, I haven't, I've only seen a couple logs by Craft though, so I don't really know their personality, um, and not sure how much they've really been trained. But I'm just gonna say, this is probably a D tier. Without more information, this is like, like I'm even gonna put it behind Grace. Like I don't know what this character is capable of, and I don't know what kind of personality they have. So I don't know how hard it would be to beat them in a death fight. Um, so that, again, if we, if we had kind of a mystery tier, X tier or something, that's where I would probably put craft. It's just too much. Um, Leaf. So I think Leaf is another solid B character, maybe C. 
I'm going to put Leaf in like C plus tier uh, ahead of Cornell. I think that, um, especially because Leaf doesn't really train with key techniques like he talked about in the last fight with Genesis like he doesn't use talent and hasn't fought a lot of things with talent like he's good with the sword but he's really not experienced enough with what's out there to be that much of a danger right now for sure Lynn uh a lot of you might not remember Lynn uh she was a Saiyan warrior who uh was kind of the rival to Nova for a little while um she actually was pretty strong she was like a Saiyan princess from another uh from another world but she also was crazy uh split personality type crazy um and crazy makes you dangerous not gonna lie it it is a f it, it definitely makes you a little bit more dangerous than the average character i'm gonna put lynn probably probably here um well i don't know hmm that's a tough one i don't I'm not sure that that's right. She She's probably actually stronger than Koshor. Uh, I'd say she's even stronger than, than Cordia was. Uh, that that feels right. Okay, yeah. I think I think this is about where I would put Lin and probably contesting that with Hypo a little bit. Leilin. Uh, Leilin is a demon of the Raven Totem, also part of the Shadow Atmosphere and Rebels arc. I think Leilin has some really fucking cool powers, really strong powers too. I think, uh, I think if he had the the red points, I think Leilin would solidly be an A. Uh, he's got some tricky stuff. Uh, again, you know, like I, I think his tech, I think his like just ability sheet puts him would make him way more deadly to fight than Hypo. Um, with his ability to, like, turn his skin into metal and, like, you know, attack you with flocks of ravens, watch you, that sort of thing. Um, and who who knows what else he would develop over time. But, yeah, that's where I would put Leyland. Um, I think Galvis and Leyland would probably be, like, interchangeable, though. Um, Lieber, uh, Rendo's uh, non-drinking Vinian, who gave up... Uh, who took on sobriety after the incident uh well he he beat leaf so i mean beat the snot out of leaf so he's definitely in b tier somewhere um i'm gonna put him i'm gonna put him behind Kalo, kind of you know above leaf but uh behind everyone else until we learn more i don't know what kind of abilities he would have but uh, maybe if he started drinking again then we would then he'd be a little bit higher on this list all right, lie. Uh, the shadow. Uh, I don't think anyone's gonna disagree with me that if <laughs> if anyone else was piloting the character of lie, <laughs> if <laughs> if it was anybody else who had that character with that backstory and all the stuff that he has done, uh, and all of those abilities that he has, I don't think there's any question that lie is one of the most dangerous characters on chat. Um. I'd, I'd definitely say that he's more dangerous than Fusion. Um, if, again, if someone else was role-playing. <laughs> uh, Nathan just, I don't know, Nathan just sandbags so hard. Uh, he doesn't, he doesn't really, he made this super spy with all of these, and it just, I don't know, and then he loses every fight. I don't, I don't know, I don't know how that happens, but, um, <laughs> when you're getting killed by Zofu, something's wrong. <laughs> Not with the character, with you. Uh, Majime. Uh, Majime is another one of these magic demons. Uh, I think his powers would be crazy. I am I would wholeheartedly put Majime into the A tier. I think if Majime had the, the red points and, uh, and an ability kit uh, that matched kind of what he's shown himself to be, I think he would be really scary. Um, probably, I'd definitely put him over Galvis. Um, Masher, uh, this is another one of Zote's characters, one of the detectives from DBI Noir. Uh, I feel pretty safe in putting Masher behind Bangers. I think that Bangers was kind of the muscle of the two of them. Masher was more of the thinker. Uh, so that's, that's where I would put that one. Um, Misho, it's been a long time since Misho was on the, on the channel. Uh, he was also part of kind of like the stuff going on in Nig Yellow. 
I feel like I feel like even in the moment of things when he was around with his abilities and the he was sort of a scientist type character that it was it was pretty heavily implied that he was uh, you know more of an asset towards the rebellion Cordia. So I think a very easy way to determine where Misha would go is just to say, like, we knew, we knew from back then off of the potential he had at that time that uh, he was probably stronger than, than Cordia. Mosin! Oh, man. Uh, so Mosin is T2. Mosin is a martial arts master of sun and moon, has fought and defeated Nova, uh... In combat, lost lost a couple times too, but has you know was was her rival for a long time. Um, fought in the proving and lost to Taco, uh, but Taco was a tear over him. Um, I think that I think that Mosin is going to be a damn good fight on any given day, uh, but I don't think Mosin. I think Mosin and Hypo would be about the same level. Uh, again, Mosin's techniques are very, very straightforward. There's really not a whole lot um, that's going to surprise you going into that, but it'd be a hard fight one way or another. Mistroma, uh, kind of one of the newer characters for the setting, uh, part of the stuff that's going on in Earth, an arc that doesn't have a name right now. A um, little bit of sanctuary, kind of like post-sanctuary arc. Uh, Machian... He has one ability so far where he turns like a little energy ball, um, and I've seen him do bone swords a lot. I think, based off of what I've seen so far, the the thing is, Mistroma doesn't have like a strong leading personality, and I do think that that really matters in a fight quite a bit. Uh, he's definitely more of like a supporting character. I don't I don't know if he can hold the spotlight on his own. Let me put it that way. Uh, so I think he'd be a little bit easier to beat than some of his companions for that reason. I'm going to put him into A, into C tier. Um, probably, definitely, I think Cornell would be harder to beat. Yeah, actually, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm still kind of going back on Cornell. I don't know. I think Cornell should be in B. But I don't know. Okay. Nath. Oh, baby. Uh, I think that if Nath had the reds, this would be a very scary character. I don't, I'm going to put him just at the bottom of A because we don't we don't know what it would look like. But I think that Nath would be incredibly frightening uh, if, he, if he got strong enough um, just because of how strange and odd he is. Nath is a bio-android, part of uh, a very strange series. Uh, the very little bit that we've seen of him has, you know, he was had he had quite an outing, um, but he's only appeared like once or twice on the channel. Nova, I don't think any, I don't think anyone's surprised here. I'm gonna put Nova in S tier, but I am going to put Nova at the bottom of S. Um, I think that on a completely even playing field, Fusion would be more of a match because I think, not because. Nova isn't willing to kill somebody, but because Fusion really enjoys it, um, I think that you know, I think he, I think Fusion goes when he when Fusion goes to bed, he jerks off to the people he's murdered. Uh, that's, that's, uh, that's that's the reason I would do that. Um, but definitely S tier for sure. Um, Okubo. I don't really know much about Okubo, except that he was an android that was helping Lai's daughter out um, at the Psycho Ranch, and that was really about all I really saw of him. Um, I'm going to put him solidly into D tier. Uh, probably, well, I don't know. I don't know. Definitely in D somewhere, though. Um, Rizian. Uh, Rizian's new character, Demon Forge Master. Uh, in service to the Lord of Blacklay, uh, don't I don't know what direction Rizian's going to take. I don't know how much of a fighter he's going to be. I do know that um, he's got the potential, and Rizian's historically tend to be late game finisher characters. I don't know if that'll happen this time. 
Um, I'm going to say without more information, just based off of what we've seen right now, Rizian's at, like, the bottom of C at the moment. Um, you know, he he doesn't have the training. He doesn't... We don't know what his abilities would be. Uh, and, yeah, we'll, we'll need more information to say any differently, but that's where I'm going to put Rizian right now. Um... Soliath. Uh, Soliath's a really upcoming hero type. He has that hero personality, I would say. Um, so, and he's had a lot of training behind him. Uh, his tomfas are interesting. I've seen the way that he uses those tomfas and his ability to like create uh, constructs and things. I think Saliath's got the personality and the, and the skill kit to go into A tier. Um, I think he's probably going to be somewhere in the realm of, like, Galvis, Soliath, and Leyland. I think that's where I would expect to see him. Um, Sax. This was, uh, Lai's, uh, Namekian character who was, like, an elemental summoner of kind. That's, that's the direction I would have seen that character going. Uh, but he was very much kind of a pacifist style character and very against fighting. I think Sax uh, definitely goes into the bottom of D. Uh, he probably had he probably would have had a really crazy skill set, but he wasn't like he wasn't a violent person at all. I think even in a death fight, he'd be doing it mostly out of pity for you um, or because you're trying to kill him. Sticks. Sticks is an interesting one. We've seen that she gets very strong, at least in, in past eras. We've seen how strong and powerful a, a Sticks can be. Um, in this new system, in this in this time around, will she be, though? Uh, she's definitely been more in the background as of late. Uh, she hasn't... I, I have not been seeing leading character energy from her, I'll put it that way. Uh, def but very strong supporting role. But she does have a powerful kit. Very powerful. Um, I think she belongs somewhere in like B+. I don't think that on an average day she would lose to Hypo. Or she would win against Hypo or Mosin, though. Uh, so I am going to put Sticks into high B tier. Uh, Cyber. This is the the one and only the uh, you know the assassin from Braid. Uh, he is a he has very uh, he has a very crazy skill kit and very deep background of uh, martial arts assassination you know cyberpunk skill set. Um, has done has for a character that has not even reached T2 has done some crazy shit already. Uh, I, I think Cyber goes into A tier. I don't see any way that he doesn't. Um, I think Cyber is probably not. Cyber is a dangerous fight, almost all the time. Taco. Uh, this is a really hard one. I I don't know where to put Taco. I'm thinking just B tier. Uh, Taco is a android mage and we've not seen him on channel in a while he was a really high contender in the proving he beat mosin he's actually one of the few t3 characters out in the setting right now and he's just like doesn't show up anymore um the i think i'm just gonna go with that he beat mosin in the proving so i think this is probably where taco belongs but if, if I saw more of what abilities Taco was interested in getting, I think he could be an A tier. Uh, he's got the magic thing, and he's got the fact that he's an android. The only thing is he had, doesn't have like a martial arts style or any training as far as that goes. Um, yeah. Thousand. Uh, again, this is, this is the only survivor from the last era. I think Thousand goes into S tier. Uh, I think easily Thousand goes into S tier. He's got the Android thing again. They, you know, all this kit. He's like a, he's a hero from from the last age, the last survivor of like the Platinum Dream team. Uh, I think I think Thousand is solidly in S tier. Um, Vicia, this is another Android. She's the uh, kind of the, the the she did the Blackout file or the Lavender Files Blackout 
situation. She was amazing. There was some really good writing. Very, she looked dangerous as hell. I don't know what kind of power set Vizia would have been interested in going for. And I've not seen her on channel in a while. So it's kind of hard to say. I'm going to put her like right here behind sticks just because like solidly like right in the middle because i don't know but i i had the feeling she could like she could have been a real powerhouse um yugen yugen is one of the most trained martial artists in the setting for sure uh he he has one of the deepest backgrounds he looks like the kind of person that would tear you to pieces uh if he was you know, if he had the reds and he had some key techniques behind him. But I'm not sure what direction Yugen's going to go with his techniques. Uh, if he gets his ability to kind of turn off your chakra points or whatever, I think he would be um, a monster. Like, we've had discussions on the Immortal channel where we've been like, I don't know if we can give you that ability because it, like, it breaks things so badly. Like, I don't think any character could deal with that. Um... So yeah, I think if Yugen got a few more tiers under his belt and some really strong abilities, I think he would solidly be into A tier. Um, probably... Uh, probably here. I think also Cyber's probably more dangerous than a potential Majime. Um, yeah, yeah, it'd be something like this. I Actually, I think, I think Yugen probably belongs here okay yeah all right zalker uh the i guess i guess he's the the rogue one the rogue one the uh the agent of the empire who was sent after the rebels and was lost and hasn't shown back up since he went down into i think it was called the atlas um don't really have a a, sh a good idea of what zalker's like final kit would have looked like he has the ability to like make, I forget it was armor or just blades that would come out of him, like kind of like key blades that would erupt out of his skin or something. And he was messing around with some ability to like turn into total darkness, but I don't know, don't know what that would have done. But I will say that those two types of abilities make me think that he probably was going to be a tricky fighter, um, you know, and and Zalker. Man, Zalker is definitely willing to beat you no matter what it takes. He he killed Minoko in like the worst way possible and did, you know, pulled a whole heist on his ass to kill him. Um, so yeah, again, I think evil characters just in general are stronger uh, and a little bit harder to take down if they have all the same motivations as you to win, because um, they'll cheat and you might not. Uh, I'm gonna put Zalker into B tier, probably behind Sticks. Yeah, uh, without more information. And then Zofu, uh, I don't think Zofu is a particularly dangerous character to encounter necessarily. Uh, if you're on the same level as him, uh, if you're under his level, he he'll bully you, but. If you're on the same level, I don't think Zofu is a very hard one to take down. Um, I'd put him in C tier, right there with Rizian. And there you have it. Uh, that's the list. That's the list. Let me move my little thing. Um, this is the this is what I would put as the final list. Again, kind of my parameters for this is just that everyone's the same tier, probably like tier two. Everyone has the same level of motivation to win. Um, and everyone's using, you know, everyone's at full HP, full power. Um, who, who would be the hardest to take down? This is my list. Um, hope you guys had fun. You guys can find this, I guess, and make your own video or make your own list. Uh, see how you feel about it. Uh, and yeah, I'll see you guys on the chat channel.